So today is chapter eight, which is basically data wrangling, um, discussing how we can join, combine, and do some kind of reshaping. Um, so the chapter focus um, at the beginning on what is hierarchical index indexing. And uh, after going through this hierarchical indexing, then the chapter diving into um, data manipulation on join and all those stuff. So let's uh, get started. So um, so hierarchical indexing is way in which we can have indexing um, maybe at way two levels. So let's look at this uh, series. So we can see this is um, series. We can see we have a single index, you know, um, one, two, three, um, one, three. So with different kind of index, right? Um, so this way it will make more sense like to give this kind of indexing because they have different arrangement, like to give them another level of index so that we can be able to subset um, this kind of part, maybe this one. So that's if you look at this one here, we have different kind of data like this. And because if you look at this one, we have one three. So can we give it a, level, a new index? This kind of arrangement of data is um, what is called hierarchical indexing. And it is different the way we index in and stuff like that. So yeah, so this is a series with multiple, uh, uh, well, multi-index as it's index. And uh, uh, we can basically find the index. Uh, we can see here each one on like um, if we use the previous one. Um, Could I ask a quick question for yes. all you R experts? Does R have something like this uh, hierarchical indexing? Is that a standard mm -hmm. thing? Well, I think uh, I don't know. Like R, I know data frame. I don't know. Um, okay. Uh, yeah, uh, Isabel, uh, does R have hierarchical indexing? Uh, Laila, I think you can maybe accomplish something similar with factors but that's not really indexing like if you mm -hmm. want to be able to set a certain uh, order okay. but i, I don't just, think so i was just wondering because it seems kind of it's like a little bit hard to wrap your brain around so i was, <laughs> I was, I was yeah. wondering if it was it was common or not so common so i guess it's something these guys came up with okay cool thanks yeah i was also thinking about um you know yeah i mean but it's really uh you know, to see data in this kind of format, I think, with this kind of hierarchy. I mean, for example, in R, always data frame, you know, with, I mean, you don't need to, you know, have this kind of hierarchy. You can duplicate everything because there is no issue, like for space, you can have, you know, I don't know. Okay, so, um, yeah, we can also do um, the way we index, as you know, we can do something like this. So if we have this B, um, then it will give us this values, right? Um, but before, if, for example, we say um, we cannot index this kind of uh, hierarchy like this level. So with this, we can do such kind of indexing. And also we can do, you know, um, you know, um, multi-level indexing. So here we can see we have two, right? Um, but uh, as you know, like this one, um, Ron, uh, the other time you say, we need to make sure that when you are using lock, so we use like double breaks, like the, or like this one. Um, here we can see we just you know um, you know subset it. We just uh, but if you are using log, we need to provide like um, you know um, uh, what do you call it uh, list? Yeah, in form of list. So this one, um, if we remove this one, it would uh, actually give us an error. Um, so uh, the reason why they introduce this is because um, hierarchical indexing uh, uh, really helpful when we talk about uh, reshaping and group uh, operation base like that. So <clears throat> yeah, so this uh, stuff like stack and unstack, we'll see it uh, later on. But the main idea they want to see is that, uh, for example, here we can see we have somehow kind of long format. Now when you use this operation unstack, um, basically, what it would, it would, I mean, you know, what do we call it? Wide um, operation. In, in R, we have something like pi by uh, longer and pi by wide or something like that. And the inbox, we can stack it and bring it back to this format. So, this is what um, they will discuss uh, next. Um, yeah, so that's a series, right? Um, we have seen a series where we can do stuck and stuck, but you can actually have this kind of hierarchical indexing with um, data frame. So here is a data frame we can see, um, right? And um, 
here we can see like this is one level um you can have multiple level of indexing so here we can see we have one level here and now here we can see as well we have another level so uh we can have also the names of the uh, index so here we can have index so here you can see the index is like we don't have names so when we have names here we have q1 and q2 so here this level and this one so it means it's good when we want to do some kind of subsetting so it's good to name our indexes so here we have the index and now with this index we can do a lot of other stuff and you can be able to see how many index you have so how many level you have for your hierarchical you know so here we have one two and you can see this hierarchy and now having um, um having this we can basically um try now to um take some part from our hierarchy so here we can see here we have for example states and here we can see we have like uh, this so state we have this colorado and here and now when we do this it will give us only um the data for um this uh, one that we take um which is green and red and we can see like um uh, this one is not there so this is basically subsetting as we know um yeah so also um you can do reordering and sorting um so just um for this chapter i was saying before like i would take different data set to go through it um, but it turns out that i will like uh, it takes time for me i'm trying to find data that works so i just follow um you know how the books the data the books use so i didn't use any one so um um you can basically um swap levels so this is uh one way you can swap this level so here we have q1 basically just kind of swap it and you can also do index sorting so we can see here for example this is basically um you know uh data frame and uh, we can see this index is not sorted um so we have a function called in the sort index that basically does um sorting so you can see now here when you have a data frame and you want to have your index to sort your data frame now in this case with this kind of hierarchical you can also do indexing um by by default it does what is called lexicographically indexing so when we run this guy on our data frame we can see that uh, it saw this one so here we can see we have a we have b but it saw them like one two because because one um you know comes before two um, but you can also choose how you can do um so by default uh here when you call because we do not here provide any index to sort um what it does is that um it choose the um you know the the first one to sort but we can provide the level so here we can say level one this is level zero so level one it can sort them like this so it sorted now based on the key one one so one one then two two this is um yeah the sorting it does so this is basically um how you can do sorting with hierarchical indexing but you can also do summary statistics so summary statistics is basically um you know uh, mean and taking all those stuff so how can we do that in our um uh, hierarchical data so let's look at this way now here we have a data frame here frame and we can see here we have um this uh, index we have this one and now we have other um levels here set and color now if we want to uh take summary i mean summary statistic based on maybe key two here what we need to provide is we need to use this function group by and now we provide the level so this is a level by level two key and now we sum so what this does is that um by key so here we can see um we have one we have one right so here the data here will be this plus this because we group by so zero plus six here we can have six and now here two and two we have three plus nine is two up so it group by by this key right so this is how it does so previously you can do something without using the group by because this is you know so intuitive in r this is how we do this kind of summary statistic now you group by and take you know um, call the function to do that but previously in pandas what it does is like you can just call the 
data frame and you just call the um um summary functions and just provide the level but now they deprecated this function um i didn't know like they didn't uh they uh just now that i realized that they deprecate this function so it works um the same thing as we can see um but now i think this one is more intuitive you need to group by then you you know do the aggregation after which is uh the way r does the same thing um yeah so we can also provide um you know uh group by by either the uh column so here we can see uh the something but you provide the level which we say by color and you know the axis is column uh so this one also does um a summary statistic and um yeah let me run this oh i didn't run everything i think <laughs> Anyway, okay, so the same thing, but just um, changing the column and stuff like that. Okay, um, indexing with data frame column. Yeah, so I think um, this is basically um, still indexing and stuff um, uh, uh, that relates to how you can do uh, uh, um, indexing and stuff with hierarchical data frame. Um, so let's move on to um, next stuff, which is combining and merging data sets. Um, but I think it's also good, maybe if this one runs. Okay, it runs. Uh, let's see this. So what this means is um, indexing uh, data frame. So here we can see uh, we have, uh, is it hierarchical? Oh, okay. This is normal indexing, I think. Yeah, it's normal indexing. Let's move on. It's normal indexing of the data frame. So um, combining and merging data sets. So this section basically talks about different kind of ways where you can merge data frame. Uh, it talks about using merge functions. It talks about using concat functions. And also this talks about using join function. So um, the merge is basically, um, you know, similar to SQL, relational, similar to R, um, where we use um, left join, right join, stuff like that. So this is uh, more or less the same thing. So let's look at how we can use, um, use that one. So let's look at here we have DF1 and here we have DF2. And we can see here DF1 has a key and has an index, um, the key here we have B, A, C. So it has B, A, and C, but this one only has A, B, D, right? So it means something appears here and doesn't appear here. So let's look at how we can do that. So when we call a match function on two data frame, uh, we can see here what happens. So it basically, uh, we have data one and we have data two, it basically matches to data frame, but how it does that? It does this merging based on the key and based on the um, intersection of the key. You don't provide what they merge on um, because here we have a key and here we have a key. So calling merge, it will automatically do the merging based on the key that is um, you know, uh, available in both DF. But how it does, um, we can see here, we have B, C, um, but we don't have C here and we have D here. So all the C and D are, dis, um, are discarded, are not here. Um, only what is available in both two data frames, it does. So here we can see um, what this is doing um, in R. Okay, you can also, instead of you to use this format, you know, we provide merge and, you know, this and this, you can use this format, right? Um, df merge. So these two things, they achieve the same thing. Um, <clears throat> uh, but um, what this kind of joining is doing is doing um, inner join, right? Um, if we look at this, um, you know, this function, um, uh, merge. Um, so if we look at merge, uh, the, the default, uh, default is inner. We can see like, it has some kind of parameter called how, and you provide how the merging will work. So we have left, right, outer, but by default it's inner. And this inner default um, basically does this kind of, you know, find the intersection as you know in R, 
Uh, so the ENR, uh, which one is equivalent? It's called what? Inagen, right? Uh, remember, I mean, ENR is called what? Left, no, no. Uh, Inagen. Inagen, right? Yes. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, DFLI is also called, also called Inagen. So that's how it does. So here we can see, like, even if we don't provide the how it does the join, it would use the default, but we can provide, like, how we want this to be. But also um, you can provide if these two DFs, they have this different key. So here we have key and here we have, no, no, no. Here we have key and here we have key. But if they have two different keys, you can provide um, the, this, you know, on. So we, if you look at um, this match, uh, we can see here that um, it has uh, on uh, column index to join. So we can see this is it. And now you can provide the key. But yeah, um, but if the columns have um, somehow different names, um, how can we do that? So here we create um, an EDF, DF3, and we have an EDF, DF4. We can see here we have L key, we have R key. Um, yeah, there's something in R where we provide like, um, you know, I think vector, we see, we open, we provide the names of that. So here what it does, the mage has um, something called like, um, you know, on, left on or something like that, right on, something like this. So um, you need left on, provide the merge, the key to merge in left. So here we can see this is a left, which is L key, uh, because here this is L key. And here the right one, here we provide the right. So um, yeah, so this one will do basically the same thing uh, as well. So I think in R we just provide, um, I forgot, something like that, and just provide the column inside a, a, a vector, something like that. Um, yeah, so that's how this works. Um, yeah, so we can see like if we want to do other kind of joining, we can provide how outer and we can provide, um, you know, left and also use outer. This is still the same thing. Yeah, so that's how this uh, many to one works. Um, yeah, anyone wants to add something? Okay. Um, so the, the another one is many to many match from you know uh, this stuff. So um, yeah, so um, here many to one. I think they call it right. Uh, many to one. So we can see um, each um, each value here match to one here, right? So that's many to one, and uh, here is many to many. Let's look how it works. So here we have another df df one, and we have another df2 and um um yeah so this is left uh, match uh yeah so that's left match uh where it does this kind of many to many um meaning that uh, each value here in this b here it will be matched with any other b here so this is something you can see here we have the first b which is zero it matches to this one b1 one, uh which is b0 you know Am I right? Um, yeah, something like that. So this is how coming like, you know, outer, you know, late and right. And this is all the something. Um, yeah. Um, to match with multiple keys, pass a list of column names. So here, I think um, if you want to match with multiple keys, so uh, here we have um, a data frame called write, and we can see we have key one and key two, and now here we have another one, key one, key two. Um, so what we can do is um, when we match with them, so we need to provide them as, you know, um, somehow kind of a, a, a list, right? Um, but let me see uh, on, level or list column window okay mm. but i think this one you can also provide I, i'm not sure whether it must be like uh, this you we can change this to be like this i don't know let's yeah something like this so um this is um uh combining by two uh, stuff yeah so another thing is uh, when we look at this like um um if we have overlapping columns um what really happened is that uh, by default uh, we can see here we have um you know we say match left right but 
on Q1. So here we see in Q1, but here in these two data frames, we have Q2 and Q2, the same thing. Now it will automatically name them like this Q2, it could, you know, dash X, dash Y, but um, uh, it comes with suffix. Pandas comes with suffix if you want to do it like this. So if you say left, right, and on Q1, so Q2, we have something like this. It will be the left, and we have something will be by the right. So the left one will have this you know, suffix, and the right one will have this suffix. Um, I'm not sure in R, how do you do this in R? If we have um, similar columns name. I've never used uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, I'm thinking, I don't know. I forget. Um, I think in R also, the, it names it with X or something like that, but uh, but that must be like, uh, you know, uh, something to do that. Okay, so anyone wants to add something? I would just add, uh, there's a, a final method that he doesn't mention called cross. You can put how equals cross. Uh -huh. you, can get the, you can get the full Cartesian product. It doesn't require any, doesn't use any keys. It just gives you every oh. single possible combination of rows from the two. Wow. Frames. I don't know why you'd ever want to do that, but okay. it's there. Cross. <laughs> yeah. Right. yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's look at cross. That's the full uh -huh. Cartesian. Mm -hmm. nope. I don't think you give it on. Yeah. Don't mm -hmm. just try to, I think I might complain about the on. But yeah, it doesn't like the on. Yeah, take away the on. On equals key one, just remove that because there's no key on a cross join. Ah, okay, okay, okay. I think that's it's what I was complaining about. I don't know, yeah. <laughs> anyway, I just wanted to mention it exists, yeah. Ah. So there you go, you get you know this huge table of every possible combination. I don't know what, you, what I don't know what you'd want to use it for, but maybe you, there's some application. But... Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. So um, the match has this cross, create a Cartesian rule from post frames without the order of the, okay, right. Oh, cool. and uh, Isabella wrote mm -hmm. that D player has uh, suffixes after all. So mm -hmm. in the, in okay. the chat. Oh, right. Oh, okay. Never use them too. <laughs> Okay, so merging on index. So here we can see like we merge on keys, right? Given a key. So let's look at maybe sometimes um, uh, we may have an index that uh, let's look at this. So here we have a new data frame. This is the, the key. And here we think a uh, right one here, we have like an index, right? So this is the index and this we have a key. Um, so what this means is that um, this data frame um, has a key, but also the index, but this one does not have a key, but the index is something. So the idea is we want to match this and this, but we want to use this data frame. We want to match by its index and this one by the key. So what we can do is the same thing um, left on, we provide the key where we want to use them, but right on, right um, index is supposed to because the right one um, doesn't have a key. So we say right index is true. So the right index, what right index basically says, um, use the index for my data frame uh, as, um, you know, uh, yeah. So you can see we have left index, we have a right index. Um, yeah. So when we run this guy, this will give us something like this. So this is, um, you know, match how it works. Um, yeah, left key, right index is true, the something. You can also use a uh, index on the box axis. Um, so we can see here, we don't have a key, this DF. This one, we don't have a key as well. So we can say left index through, right index through. So what it will do is basically use these to do the match. Um, also this one where the how and the, you know, it depends on what you wanna do. Right, so that's match how it works. So in summary, we can see that match allow us to, you know, put, data frames or series based on a key, right? Um, in some sense, I think, and also allow us to specify how we wanna, you know, um, put match our data frame. Maybe, you know, we wanna use inner, made, inner or left, you know, all those kind of settings in set format. So match give us such kind of flexibility to do that. Um, yeah. 
Um, but we also have some kind of, uh, you know, nice functions, uh, which are instance of the merge. So, for example, the next one, I think, is join. Um, the main, you know, the main workforce is merge function, I think, yeah. And these, the other one we'll see, like, join. I think they were built on top of merge. Um, correct me if I'm wrong. I'm not sure 100%, uh, Ron, is that correct? Um, but I was thinking, like, the merge is the workforce. Um, all these join, they are somehow kind of instances that can allow you to do um, some kind of, uh, you know, um, tax more easier, you know, than the merge. So let's look at how this works. The to merge is a kind of like a database merge thing, right? Um, whereas join is just kind of just like shoving things together, right? You're just going to mm -hmm. shove two, two, two data frames together this way or shove them together this way. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. There's no, there's no key involved, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. There's so no um, cross product involved either. Mm -hmm. So um, data frame, so it has this join. So let's look at this. Um, um, uh, we have this uh, layout, we have another <clears throat> data frame. <clears throat> we can see this one, does it still have, you know, index, right? Um, we can use the match here we use, uh, where we provide left index, right index, it can, you know, put them together. We are not using any key here, right? We just say, yeah, use the index. But um, what happened here is that uh, when we use um, join, join will automatically use you don't need to provide this like you know use left index or whatsoever if you want if you yes you can use match but for you to use match to you know um match them based on the index you need to provide this you know uh, argument but join simplifies this kind of stuff um where you just put them you know join you know this one is um it doesn't matter whatsoever any kind of uh, i think uh, join we want uh, you know that's space right so we can see like um, the join will automatically this so, so compare previous example using match we can see join simplify margin by index so join here simplify margins by index you don't need to provide that as we saw here and by default um join does margin by left join so um so if we look at um an example here uh, we have left one, we have right one, right? Now, if you come to join as well, so we can see join how also the way we have seen mage, join also have this left, right, you know, outer and inner, you know, and all this stuff, um, this suffix and stuff like that, it does have all this stuff. Um, but by default, it does um, by left match. Um, yep. Uh, okay. Um, I can see here I'm using on key, but okay. Uh, okay, so here we can see we have, you know, key and here we don't have a key, but here we provide the key. And I think join will automatically match with this one. So <clears throat> yeah, uh, Join, you oh, know, you know I, I see now that you're completely right. Yeah, it is just kind of a special case of merge. I, I don't know why I thought it was somehow like its own kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, yeah. That so, that's a pretty cool observation, I guess. Yeah. I, for some reason, yeah, in my so, brain, I was just thinking, oh, they're just like, this is merging is like database and joining is just, you know, but no, it is yeah. like a special case. Interesting. Yeah. So the join is, um, you know, is built on top of a merge. Um, it allows you to simplify other stuff. So if you look at it, I think, uh, yeah. So yeah, uh, uh, for simple index, you can pass it up to generate. Okay, let's look at this an example. So here we have another um, uh, data frame. Um, here we have another data frame. Uh, we can see here and here I have another one three. And now I wanna do like somehow kind of join here. I can see I have A, C, you know, all these stuff. You can do like, join and also provide these other two maybe in form of list so you can concur you can see here i'm putting like three data frames you know putting them together you can see the first one which is left two um the left two this is this state nevada here we can see that and uh, we can see right and another one so right is this and this you can see them and another one here so it means you can basically join you know multiple if i have four or whatsoever 
I can just put, you know, the one here, the first one, and, you know, uh, yeah, and put them together. So this is way in which, and you can specify how you want to do the margin, whether it is outer whatsoever. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, anyone wants to add something? <clears throat> no question. Hey, Leila, no question or no contribution. Isabel, Jed, all of me, no contribution. <laughs> oh, we are all good. All right. So um, I think the next one is um, concatenating along axis, an axis. Um, so um, now we have seen a merge and we have seen, um, you know, join where we can basically, um, you know, um, use, um, put data frame, maybe, you know, we put, we have another one, we can, you know, do such, such kind of, you know, manipulation operations, but join also, we have a data frame, we want to join it here, we want to stack it some way. Now, what about if you want to use um, along an axis? So along an axis meaning like, okay, I want to do, you know, axis row or along column. You want to specify that. So let's look at this. That is concatenate, right? So this is just an example that's motivation. Here I have, uh, you know, array, numpy array. And now uh, I want to concatenate this numpy array. So you can see like I stack them. This is for the first one, this is the second. So I call the same numpy array. I have array, array, you know, I stack them, right? So concatenation, um, the default way for doing concatenation is by, you know, um, along zero index, meaning it put them below. If I change this one, maybe to, if we look at concatenate, right? Um, we can see the parameters, axis, integer, you know, um, the axis which we join, if none, array are uh, platinum before use, default is zero. So we can see the default is zero, meaning it's um, basically use zero index. So we can use one to be column. Um, but when we provide one, so it can put them here as column. So we can see like concatenation, like it just, um, so when we, yeah, this is basically like uh, an array, uh, array, but the same thing is true for pandas data frame. So let's look at uh, pandas data frame. Um, we have, uh, Okay, this is a series here. We have another series. And now here we have another series. We have series. Now when I concatenate them, can cut. So we have different thing here. We can see here in NumPy, we have a function called concatenate, right? That does such kind of concatenation. But in Pandas, because we know Pandas um, was built on top of NumPy, um, I'm not sure why it's not using concatenate as well, but it isn't just a name called concat. Um, anybody knows why, like, you know, sometimes you can see like some functions, some pandas, they have the same name with, you know, um, NumPy, but it just override the NumPy one, um, if you using the pandas. Um, so for example, we have, you know, some in pandas, we have some in NumPy, I think, and if you call PD you wanna do, so it encapsulate that. But I'm not sure, like here, we have two different things. Um, anybody knows? Uh, yeah, but anyway, so we can see here because we have not provided the axis, it just flattened them, you know, zero axis. Um, by default, it's using, you know, um, but if I put the column, meaning um, column means one around the column, um, I have two data frame, you can see it does this. And here we can see like, a, because can cut also have these parameters, um, the, the join whether inner or outer you can see that so we can provide how it does the concatenation and the by default i think is uh inner so that's why we have this okay it's outer by default it's outer so we can change every other thing um yeah so uh that is this um okay sometimes data from the rules index does not contain any relevant data. So sometimes um, um, if you wanted to, um, you know, concatenation, the row does not contain relevant data. So let's look at this data. So we can see we have DF1 and we have DF2, right? But it turns out that DF1, we have just the index 0, 1, 2. And also DF2, we have 0, 1, 2. Now, it doesn't make sense to say like we are, you know, concatenating based on 
um, you know, we can concatenate what will happen. So let me just show us here. Now, here I can concatenate this two, two data frame. But it turns out that here I have 0, 1, 2, right? So you can see 0, 1, 2. And now in the second one also I have 0, 1. So you can see I have 0, 1. So when you can cut in, we assume to have, you know, um, you know, a sequence, the index to continue, like, you know, it doesn't need to, you know, inherit the previous, you know. So in that case, you need to say ignore index true. So when we ignore index, it means it will, you know, uh, you know, uh, change the sequence to you know to you know uh, natural numbers without inheriting the natural uh, this uh, the previous one, but it also do the concatenation. So this is something I think so good that um, uh, what concatenate does, um, and it's um, this is something that I really don't know like you know uh, this you know, uh, and also find out like um, um, you know looking at these kind of um, you know parameters is really informative to you know remember all this stuff. Yeah. In fact, like um, in VS Code, um, the moment you put like here, I, I, I have concat in just like R, like, you know, if I'm working on concat, it would automatically shows me, you know, um, if for example, I move, you know, another function here, you know, it will automatically, this guy tells me, I quickly jump in and find out. Uh, yeah, so, so far um, we can see like concat, what it oh, does. Be. Question. Yes. Yes. Um, sorry if I missed it. If you go up to the concatenated uh, data frame that has an ignore index equals false, like what happens if you try to index on like zero? Or like, like it, since there are multiple ones. Um, you said like, what? Like, oh, like, you know, the row zero and then row zero one zero uh, row three both have zero index is that right uh sorry the oh, I, I see what she's saying she's saying that the, that concatenated data frame the index doesn't seem very well formed since, since it has a repeated values right right so what if i try to index on oh give me row zero i guess i'll get both of them i would assume ah uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, was sure. I could try it too <laughs> i was like oh yeah a very, so, not a very good index right <laughs> <laughs> right what? But, yeah what so i think <laughs> yeah so i think this is one of the issue this is one of the reason why we need to draw you know indexes you know to yeah. you know have i'm surprised that's not the default but i guess like more oh yeah different. exactly exactly this is something like uh surprising like it's not default because like somebody would not even think of it would <laughs> never, you cannot remember this right you just you know say that I just can catch in my data frame, you know, I move on without knowing that, you know, you had such kind of repeated and you, when you try to index something, you index something wrong. Yeah. Uh, okay. Thanks. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I all the work I've done with pandas, I hardly ever use index. You probably should, I should use indexes more, but generally I never use indexes. I'm kind of thinking the way you do an R where I just use the columns. I have mm -hmm. columns that are my factors that tell me what the things are what, so. Yeah. Um, so often I'm doing reset index all over the place because I get these weird index. Like we select out a subset of columns, we'll get an index. Now it's got like missing items in it. It'll cause problems later down. So you have to do a reset index to put that back to a regular count from zero to N, you know? Mm -hmm. it's, but that's probably because I'm just using pandas wrong. Mm -hmm. <laughs> or not in the proper EDM, I guess. Yeah. So um, so far we have seen now uh, how we can do the concatenation. So concatenation given index one, it does something like this, and given index zero, it does you know put in them um, you know math rows. And also we have seen merge. Uh, merge basically you know uh, take two data frames and merge them based on a key. So yeah you know you merge them. Um, right. Um, so combining data with overlap. So this is something also, um, you know, uh, that's useful. So for example, here, I have a data frame here. I have A and now I have B, right? Um, so what this means that, okay, combining data with overlap. So what this means is that if we look at this data, I mean, okay, this is a series. So what works for a series would works in a data frame. So here I have A with I have F, E, D, C, F, you know, up to A, he have up to A, right? But now I want to combine these two data frame or two series in the sense that where there is N, A in these replaced with something in here, right? I think something that we do in R is if else, you know, if, if else, you know, all those stuff, you know, return this. So 
pandas has something called combined first that does this so a combined first b what it does like if you have an a in the a it will replace with content of b but it has the same you know um index so f will be the so when we run this we can see here we have na none so it will play by 0, 0.0 so here we can see this this is called um what this you're combining data with overlap so yeah so this is something cool i think um uh yeah um yeah so i think um here also they talk about using the data frame which is also the same so here we can see we have df1 we have df2 and now we can see df1 combined first df2 so as we can see here we have df1 we have none here right and now here in this okay this one is none okay what about in a the second value here is um here in second row is any um but here is uh for 4, 4.0 right so when we do a df1 that combine first so here the na will be 4.0 so this is, this is something like you know instead for you use it like if else whatsoever it, this a convenient function that allows you, you know to combine two data frame and replace the instance in one column if there is uh yeah okay anyone wants to add something or continue uh there the equivalent to the if else is called where there's a function called where yes in, uh, yes Panda. yeah so I think it's a NumPy function, right? Not pandas. It's also promoted to a pandas thing. Ah, uh, mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, the it, books. And, it, and it's named where and not something else. So that's good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. The book, the book also um, shows, uh, motivate this example with that kind of where. I just remove it, you know. Um, so yeah, so using where, it tried to show where, where is NA and stuff, it remove with that. So yeah. So um, the next section is reshaping and pivoting. Uh, so this section discuss how we can, you know, do some stuff we normally use in R, um, which is called pivot longer and pivot wider, something like that, um, using stuff and stuff. So this is something like we have a row one, row two, and we have column one and column two double values. Now, when we stack this data frame, so, you know, um, this would be these, the columns, you know what I mean? And these rows will be this. So this is called in our um, uh, 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 column two to turn. This is pi bot, which one? <laughs> yeah. uh, pi bot longer or wider? Pi bot longer. Yeah, five bot longer. This is five bot longer, and this one is um when we it's already five bot wider, something like that. So, um, this is what is it called? What is it called in? Oh, pivot. pivot, pivot. You pivot. mean? Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> I, I will point out that that's different. There is a there is a pivot and melt thing that is later on, but yes, stack and unstack are a little different in that they actually create these hierarchical indexes instead of new mm -hmm. new columns. So, yeah. So um. So in other yeah. words, it's not exactly equivalent to the pivot. It's more pivots more equivalent to pivot and melt. Pivot wider is equivalent to pivot and pivot yeah. longer is equivalent to melt in Python. Okay, basically. yes, yes, yes. Okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um okay, so here we can see we have the F here, and now we can do this stacking, you know, um, because uh we you know we can make it longer here, I think. Um so when we run this guy, we can see we have this, you know, uh, longer, and now we can take it back using unstack. Um, but by default, the inner mass level is unstack. You can unstack different levels. So um, you can, you know, unstack different, you know, levels by providing the levels you want. So here we can see we have level zero, it unstack level zero, but we can also provide if we want to stack um unstuck by state we can do the same thing um or by one it unstuck by this um yeah then pivot long and oh this is what we uh, we already saw this uh stacking and also unstacking previously just repetition of them 
but this is pivot langa and uh, wide which basically uh, as i was saying an example of in r where we have uh, wider and uh, longer so um yeah so this is an example um, where we have these uh, you can see we have a key here and we have column a b and c and now with different keys here and now um <clears throat> this melt um, basically uh, we provide the you know uh, where we want to do that and we can see here uh, we it changes this to longer form of you know this stuff where we have we we, we have variable of uh, in these columns here it turn them and we have values so it create um you know two columns with the variable and the values and uh, um, the key where you pivot them. So if we look at the uh, uh, melt on pivot, a data frame from wide to long format, optionally living identifiers. Yeah. Um, so that what it does, um, bringing it back um, when we have this, you know, long format, um, when we have this long data frame, so we can provide this, you know, variable and the value, and we provide the key here. So here we can see returning the shaped data frame organized by given index column value. So here we give where we want it to return here, and this will return it into this format. So um, there are a lot. Of, there are a lot of uh, stuff I think under this pivot uh, stuff, um, but I skip them. Just trying to uh, uh, because I was running this, this and uh, it was not working. I was I don't know what is happening. Um, there is another one called white long um, that we have. So this is another function in pandas that basically does something closer to that. Um, so if we look at this um, an example of df data frame um, we can see here we have like a, a a you know this column with a and now we have immediately after a we have some numbers you know and now we have another value maybe here and we have id now what this white long does so on pivot a data from from white long format as well so it does the same thing with um so yeah when we look at this yeah melt on pvd data from wide to long um but i'm not sure what really makes them differ but let's look at the behavior of this one so um less flexible but more user friendly okay less flexible but more user friendly than melt so it does some have special features this one and the thing is here we provide the data frame but here you can see i has I say a b what happened here is that um, we can see here we have a we have b now what it does and now i provide the id i want to use right and now i provide something called variable g here what you do is like it will take this a and b now, if we look at A here, we have A here, A, B, C, D, E. Can you see it put it them here? And now we can see the Bs here are some values here. You can see it put the values of B here. And now this ID, it formed it as ID. And now it also removed, we have a G. So if we look at, let's look at this guy. <clears throat> no, no, here, let me use this. So if we look at it, some of the parameters we have, you can see we have j i we have j you know so what is i column to use as id that is i so you can see i is column to use as id so this is a column to use as id which we say this is a column now when we look at another variable um parameter j the same of sub uh, the same the name of the observation variable what you wish to name your suffix in the long format that is j what you name to <clears throat> name yeah Suffix. So this is J where we provide the year where it will take every suffix here attached with this and put them here. So um, here, uh, that's, um, you know, wide as, as they said, um, this is basically less flexible, but more user, um, less flexible. Um, I think the, the, the melt is somehow easier, but because it just takes some stuff, but the 
why um white long has more future that can you know grab some stuff from your columns you know and you can see here it put the a differently and it put the columns value differently and it grabs some of the you know values attached to them and put them here so this is um you know uh, i think um uh, some uh, features that i found useful with this white long yeah so i think um, there are tons of other uh, stuff um uh, at the end of this chapter but um um, I was stuck here. I couldn't continue because there are some issue. I couldn't uh, move on. Uh, but uh, more or less, that's what this uh, uh, last part talk about. Um, yeah, that's what I got. Um, anyone wants to add something? I had never seen that wide to long thing. That's pretty cool that you can pick off the A and the year and yeah, because mm -hmm. you often do get data like that where like yeah, where stuff's hidden in these yeah so Labels. this mm -hmm. yeah so in time sometime in time series you need to pick these kind of years right yeah. this is useful to plug them you know and you know yeah yeah i, I mean me too i haven't used it see it's only like um today while i was reading the chapter I'm just trying to look up the even the book i think they didn't provide this why mm -hmm. too long so yeah all right huh? very Thank cool you um so i think uh that's all i got um so yeah um i think we have the next chapter oh okay um while i was um trying oh i did run that one. Oh, while i was trying um i call like a call um kind of package uh in python which is called um data prep more or less like the way we do some kind of data analysis in r I just write uh, while, while I was Googling. So what it does basically, for example, if you have a data, you can create a, you know, a kind of report about the data that shows you a lot of stuff. So when we do this, um, it has different oh. kind of, so you can see here, it give you like overview of the data set. So this is Titanic data set. So you can see like, uh, it will tell you number of variable, number of rows, you know, missing values. You know, this is an overview, statistic, duplicate rows, all this stuff. Um, wow! You, you can talk about you know some other things like for example each variable so each feature you can see it. so passenger id you can see a lot of other things let me see um alphabetical so it will arrange with okay the age we have variable age you can see you know the you know set you know the you know for the age for all the variable in the data set you can see that you know um um okay you can see interaction between wow. you know the, that's pretty cool you can see that, what is that package called data report data prep data prep huh data prep yeah data prep so you can see these uh, interaction between these and you can see like correlation between all the variables so yeah it will create this report automatically you can see also it report missing values so with that report you can quickly glance at your data to see where you have missing values so you can see here yeah you know have missing and this one present this is cool so this is something like today i just come across it and uh, you know while looking at say oh let me run it and uh, this so it's called data prep it does have a lot of functionalities um you know if you look at it in the python it does a lot of stuff but this is just one of them to create report to see uh, data. i posted a link which i think is the link to their website if i found the right thing yeah Ah, okay. Um, Anybody that's yeah. interested in that? I just searched for it right now, but wow, that's, I mean, I guess anyone can search things, but that's pretty cool. <laughs> I really think that's yeah. Awesome. yeah, janitor house. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I like, I had many functions, many packages to do a lot of things, you know. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, you cannot, yeah, I really like that. So um, then we have next week. Uh, who is up next week? Um, uh, I am the one. Ah, okay, okay. Olua Femi. Okay. So see you um next week and good to see you all. Um yeah. All right. See you next week. Yeah. Okay, see you next week. Thanks. Thanks, Jim. Bye.